thank you very much for having me, Karen. Uh, yes, it's been a, a very intense week. With our results today suggest, uh, obviously, a significant benefit from higher uh, level of rates. Our results are up 48% year year to date, up to 3.66 billion. And uh, we particularly have uh, decided some time ago to make sure that we will. <clears throat> we're offering a complete uh, set of products to our clients, including uh, time deposits, obviously. And uh, we're still seeing uh, the thanks to the diversification uh, that our customer funds have between uh, time deposits, current accounts, but also uh, life savings, uh, mutual funds, pension funds. Uh, the impact of, uh, of rates is affecting us mostly on the asset side of the balance sheet and less so on the liability side, even though we're offering all products to all clients, obviously. Can I also ask you about what you're seeing at this stage in the cycle? Because the NPLs look really low. I mean, there was a time when we covered the sector around the, the banking crisis and we were talking a high single digit non-performing loans. Now we're like sub 3%. Do you think that can continue through this cycle as conditions get much harder for a lot of businesses and consumers? Uh, we expect asset quality to remain resilient. Uh, it is logical to think of some deterioration uh, given what you say, some slowdown in the in the economy. But the reality is the Spanish economy, the private sector is much less leveraged now than it used to be. Uh, debt uh, to GDP for families is at 50%. That's 5% below the level of the Eurozone and 36 percentage points below the level we had uh, 14 years ago when we had the big uh, crisis. And for businesses, again, the number of uh, that leverage number uh, for businesses in 90% of GDP comparing to 141% that we had 14 years ago and 101% that the uh, uh, Eurozone has right now. So uh, fortunately, the private sector in Spain uh, is much more resilient than it has uh, been for the last uh, 15 years. And hence, uh, that first line of defense is going to be important and asset quality is going to remain pretty good in uh, our view. Gonzalo, um, I, I just wanted to say there's a, there's a number in here which has really grabbed my attention, which is your cost to income ratio to down dramatically from 55% to 42.7% over the last 12 months. It looks like you're getting yourself in fine fettle in terms of your cost base. Third, two questions in one. A, are you where you need to be now on that, given the fact that that is a relatively low figure compared with history and compared with the broader sector? And B, do you think actually the broader European sector hasn't taken enough cost-cutting initiatives? Because I've seen figures out there with a six-handle and a seven-handle, a 60 70% in terms of cost-to-income ratios, which makes me think if we've got a downturn coming, they're ill-prepared. Well, uh, thank you, Steve. I would say uh, we've done a lot. It's not just about interest rates. It's also about the integration uh, we had with Bankia, where we actually delivered a billion euros of cost savings uh, just a year and a half uh, ago. So now we're benefiting from that much leaner cost structure. You look back, the Spanish banking system has reduced capacity in terms of number of branches by 62% uh, since the great financial crisis and uh, capacity in terms of people by close to 40%. So it's been a huge uh, restructuring of the sector. I haven't seen that same uh, intense restructuring in other European countries, so I would uh, agree, yes, there is more room for uh, cost, sorry, for cost income coming down uh, in other banking uh, systems, even though I think uh, efforts have been done uh, everywhere. And regarding ourselves, we are going to keep trying to uh, reduce our cost income and improve our efficiency levels even further. I think we can.